How's it going, Giants fans? Welcome back to the Fireside Giants podcast with your boys, Alex and Anthony. Today, we're discussing Daniel Bellinger, some good news on his injury front, timetable for return. We'll get you guys that information. And then a little bit of a change at linebacker. The Giants have kind of shifted their approach at the linebacker position, trying to find a little bit more production, trying to find a little bit more efficiency. And I think they're heading in the right direction, personally. I think that going with the youth, going with uh, their guys is the most beneficial uh, sequence that they could possibly put forth given um, this is still the first year of a rebuild and clearly Joe Shane is trying to retain all of his draft capital for obvious reasons he wants to keep laying the bricks and the foundation to this team and to this roster so that the team can look like the Buffalo Bills in a couple of years where they have the number one uh, defense and the number two offense that's our ideal goal obviously so right now the Giants are in a good spot six and two um, building that winning culture we're making some moves and beating some good teams in the process but uh, that doesn't mean changes don't need to be made, and I think the roster kind of shakeup is going to continue here. But let's discuss uh, Daniel Bellinger first and foremost, Anthony. Uh, before we do, how do you today, my friend? I'm doing great, and I'm excited to dive into Daniel Bellinger's you know injury update. I'm really excited that he's probably coming back this year, which is huge news for the Giants. He was balling out for the first eight weeks of the season, looking like one of the best tight ends in football, not just one of the best rookie tight ends, but one of the best tight ends in football. I love what Daniel Bellinger was bringing to the offense, and I think that he's someone that is necessary to the success of the offense, and Daniel Jones needs Daniel Bellinger in that lineup in order to continue to have great success for the rest of the season. Now on the defensive side of the ball at the linebacker position, that's one that we've been talking about a lot. We've been talking about the linebackers. They need to play better. Um, the, the interior defensive line, the, the front four has been great for the Giants this year. I mean, you're getting such excellent performances out of guys like Dexter Lawrence and Leonard Williams. But then right behind them, that linebacking core, it's been a real struggle, man. They have not been playing that well. Um, if anyone's missing tackles on this defense, it's those linebackers. But now they're finally starting to change things here and create a new approach at the linebacker position, which is very exciting. So hopefully, you know, these new guys coming in, as you mentioned, Alex, the, the new regime going with their guys, hopefully their guys could step in, make that impact and improve this defensive unit for the rest of the season. Absolutely. And right now, I think uh, when it comes to Daniel Bellinger, this is a good scenario that we're in, right? So there was fears that his injury to the eye sock, you know, fractured eye sock was bleeding out of his eyeball, that it could be season ending, let alone career ending. There was really a big fear of that. Um, his vision wouldn't be uh, restored to 100%. But luckily, Joe Shane spoke on Tiki and Tierney, I believe, yesterday on WFAN and said that uh, Daniel Bellinger, the injury, the, the surgery he went through, his eye should be 100%. His vision is unaffected. Really just, wow, dodged a bullet with that one. So really great news on that front. Bellinger, they're saying, could even return as soon as week 11 um, against the Detroit Lions. They're saying that could be a little bit aggressive, could be a little bit optimistic, but maybe week 12, week 13 at the latest. So he will get back into the groove this year and hopefully kind of compound on the success he's already experienced as a professional. And we all know how much of an impact he made in a myriad of different ways. Uh, while he was healthy, you know, and not only as a run blocker, which he already is showcasing, we he might be the best run blocker we've had in a decade at, at the tight end position. You know, Kyle Rudolph, not even close. Evan Ingram, not even close. Um, this, in fact, this is an even crazier stat. Daniel Bellinger, if he scores one more touchdown this year, will have, I think, tied the most touchdowns from a tight end for the Giants since 2017 when Evan Ingram had, I think, four um, or something like that. I think four during his rookie season. So, you know, the Giants have gotten zero production out of uh, the tight end position. You look at Travis Kelsey for the Chiefs. That guy has freaking four touchdowns in one game. So, you know, you look at what they're getting now from Bellinger as a rookie. Very, very optimistic. He's going to be an integral part to this puzzle moving forward. He already has three touchdowns on the season, two of them receiving one of them a rushing touchdown. So he's been very efficient in the red zone, providing Daniel Jones with a security blanket and scheming him the football. Big body, six foot six, 255 pounds. Um, and him coming back this year is just a great opportunity for him to keep com compounding on the success and really developing some of his skills and getting more, uh, you know, ingrained in this offense as he will be a big part of it moving forward. Uh, but how important do you think Daniel Bellinger was to the offense? You know, seeing how the run uh, running game was pretty lackluster against the Seattle Seahawks, the entire offense looks looked dis discombobulated. I think a major part of that is attributed to the loss of Bellinger. You know, what are your thoughts on that? I would agree with that. And I think that with Daniel Bellinger, one of the reasons he's so 
valuable to the Giants is because he's impactful in both facets of the game. You know, that's one of the reasons that Andrew Thomas is having such an excellent season, why he's so valuable and instrumental to the success of the Giants, because he's not only a great pass blocker, he's also a great run blocker. And for Daniel Bellinger, he's not only a good receiving tight end, which he is very good with the ball in his hands. He's very good at getting open, finding space, and he's got very reliable hands, but he's also a very good run blocker. So he impacts both facets of the game. So when you take a guy that has such an impact in the passing game, in the rushing game, you take him off the field, the whole offense suffers. Everyone suffers. The quarterback suffers. The offensive line suffers. The running back suffers. The receivers all suffer. So losing Daniel Bellinger was a huge detrimental loss to the Giants offense when he went down with that eye injury. But now coming back to the lineup, you're going to see improved, increased productivity from both the running game and the passing game. And I think that's huge because, again, you've mentioned that we haven't had a run blocking tight end like this in eons. It's been how long since I've seen a, a tight end throw some blocks like this. I mean, the Giants were using him as an offensive lineman in some of these games on the wham blocks where he comes in from the inline tight end spot and he goes and pulls across the line of scrimmage on a wham block. I've never seen a tight end for the Giants successfully make that block, but he he opened up a huge gap. This is against the Green Bay Packers for Saquon Barkley, and he took a huge run uh, for a first down. So Daniel Bellinger not only being utilized as an underneath receiving option or as a red zone threat, being used as an offensive lineman on some plays. So, yeah, he's extremely valuable to the Giants offense. The scheme that Brian Dable and Mike Kafka have been trying to run he, they need Daniel Bellinger back in there. Honestly, we you just mentioned that against Seattle, that offense was not the same. And they were missing a major component to that offense. And that component really was Daniel Bellinger. So hopefully he is able to return. Uh, as you mentioned, that week 11 timeline, that does sound a little aggressive. That sounds like he's going to be getting back a little early in that regard. Um, but if he comes back week 12, Thanksgiving versus the Cowboys, maybe he can feast and get himself a turkey leg. That would be great. So I'm hoping that he is back for that matchup because that's a huge one. We've got a lot of divisional games uh, to play at the at the tail end of the schedule. We go to Dallas, uh, then we play Washington, then Philly, then Washington again. And then, of course, we all know we finish the year in Philly. So a lot of huge, huge matchups on the schedule left over for the Giants as we try and make this playoff push. But it's just so great to hear that someone this instrumental to the offense, someone this talented, a rookie and Daniel Bellinger, while we make this playoff push, he's going to be here and hopefully we get into the playoffs and he is there to make an impact. Absolutely. I'm really hoping he's there to make an impact for that specifically. But looking at the linebacker position, the Giants obviously went into the year having deficiencies of talent at that spot. You know, Tate Crowder is okay at best. He's average at best. Um, you look at Jalen Smith. He's coming and actually made a pretty sizable impact up to this point. Uh, Giants tried to get A.J. Klein. He's been passed around like a hot potato. You know, obviously he went to Baltimore. Um, and then I think he was just actually traded. Uh, two. I who did Baltimore just get? Uh, I feel they got someone big at the deadline, but they traded Roquan AJ Klein, Smith. Roquan Smith. They sent they sent AJ Klein back to the Bears. So, um, you know, when you're looking at the Giants linebackers right now, Tay Crowder is actually losing snaps pretty fast, right? He played in just 22 total defensive snaps in Week Eight after playing 48 against Jacksonville and 40 against Baltimore. The Giants have completely taken him out. Like he missed two, he's missed four tackles in his last two games combined. That's a really bad mark. 66.7 percent missed tackle rate against Seattle in just 22 snaps only uh, he only played six run defense snaps and he missed two tackles so that's obviously indication the Giants had to make a little bit of a change there and that change is ultimately rookie out of Indiana Micah McFadden right so six twos 232 pounds not even 23 years old yet uh, McFadden played in 27 snaps so he picked up uh, the supplementary snaps that Tay Crowder left behind. And he had a stellar game. You know, didn't miss any tackles. He had two tackles, had two stops in the running game, um, you know, give up 25 yards in, in on three receptions. But again, that's not his MO. Uh, but he also, you know, had a sack to go with it. Um, so he had a pressure. And, you know, ultimately, the Giants can do a lot more with Micah McFadden as a pass rusher. And I think that's what Wayne Camarondale probably is looking at and saying, you know what, he's not going to miss as many tackles as Tay Crowder. Um, he's learned enough over the past couple of weeks. He, we can put him in and we don't, he's not going to be a liability, but he's really aggressive. He's very, very strong. He's pretty fast, straight line speed, um, you know, rushing him from that middle spot, you know, could be very beneficial. I think the Giants want to utilize him more in that fashion. He was always kind of uh, meant to be utilized in that way. And finally, I think they feel comfortable with him starting games. And I would not be surprised if Tate Crowder took a backseat role here in exchange for Micah McFadden and Jalen Smith will remain as that other linebacker in the middle of the defense. But, you know, what are your thoughts about Micah McFadden taking those snaps from Tate Crowder? And do you think that that's the right move at this point in the season? Yeah, I do think that's the right move. I think it's time to get those young guys going, uh, especially considering the success of all the other young guys that we've seen, right? Like we're seeing great success 
out of Kayvon Thibodeau. Great success from Daniel Bellinger. Well, who's to say that these later round picks, I mean, especially Dane Belton as well, who's to say that these really late round picks aren't able to step in and find that kind of success? So I'm happy that Mike McFadden is getting this opportunity. I think that like every other rookie that's gotten this opportunity with the Giants this season, he's going to thrive. And so far he has been. He was He's definitely outplaying Tay Crowder. I mean, not not like that was a you know high goal to reach because I mean Tay Crowder was really struggling this season. He had that one really solid game, probably the game of, of his career against the Bears. But other than that, it's kind of been a mess out there for Tay Crowder. He's been missing tackles. He's been terrible in coverage. He hasn't been hitting his run fits. So having a new guy in there, Michael McFadden, someone that we know fits in the Wink Martindale scheme, someone that Wink Martindale really wanted in his scheme, that just makes more sense to me. And I know that the Giants also added Landon Collins. He hasn't seen the field too much. He only saw it for about seven snaps last week, despite playing 22 snaps the week prior. But when you're taking a look at Landon Collins and what he brings to the table, he's just some depth. He's just a veteran who can provide some depth. He's past his prime. Happy that he's back on the Giants. I think it was a really cool reunion. Hoping for another reunion to, to take fold soon enough here, if you all know what I'm talking about, Odell Beckham. But getting back on track with these linebackers. Tay Crowder, again, I have not been impressed with the way that he's played this season, and it is time for him to have his playing time decrease in favor of Michael McFadden. Because when Michael McFadden's been on the field, there's been like a clear and obvious boost in quality from that linebacker position. Another player in that linebacker core, though, who I think has had a pretty underrated season is Jalen Smith. The Giants kind of just signed him out of nowhere. They needed a little added depth. They signed him similar in similar fashion to when they signed Landon Collins, just needed someone else, a body to go out there and play. But Jalen Smith has actually provided some pretty quality snaps to the Giants, and I've been impressed with what he's done alongside Tay Crowder, who's been struggling. But now I think that the best combination here for the New York Giants is going to be Micah McFadden and Jalen Smith as the starting linebackers. And I think that those two can play in tandem. And hopefully Micah McFadden can continue to progress across the second half of the season. And again, make that impact as the Giants make this playoff push. But I really like betting on these young guys. Joe Shane did an incredible job finding a bunch of young, talented rookies in this year's class. And I just want to see them all take the field, continue to develop, continue to grow into really quality NFL players. Yeah, I agree. I definitely think that uh, this defense is, uh, you know, heading in the right direction. At the very least, we have a lot of young pieces, right? You have a lot of young talent on this team, um, and they're taking steps forward. This is, you know, the way the fact that the Giants are six and two right now is kind of mind blowing. Considering if you look at their roster on paper, it's like, how did they get to six and two? <laughs> you know, how did they figure this out? Um, and that just comes down to great coaching, great discipline, and great execution. So another little, a little, little uh, thing here, Julian Love. Um, I, I believe they are uh, negotiating with his representatives right now on a contract extension. Uh, huge Julian Love fans here. Everybody knows this. Uh, we love to love love. And <laughs> he's a great guy, uh, you know, really great player, really, really uh, versatile in his ways, can play strong safety, free safety, he can go into the box and play linebacker. He can do a lot of different things, cornerbacks, uh, you know, slot corner, nickel. Uh, he's he's a very versatile and dynamic player in that regard. So I think his value is uh, underrated by many by many accounts and uh, including ours. So you know hopefully they can lock him into a deal that's pretty team friendly, but also respects the value he brings uh, to the squad, which is astronomical in my opinion. But guys, we'd love to hear your opinions below on Daniel Bellinger. You know coming back at this uh, at some point in the season, we'll see hopefully a couple of weeks. Um, that's definitely a great piece of news to deliver today. And then the change in linebacker, you know Micah McFadden. What are your thoughts on Tate Crowder? Kind of his role diminishing over the past couple of weeks and maybe over the next future couple of weeks as McFadden gets more and more reps here. I think that that's ultimately the way to go and the right decision from this giant staff uh, considering Crowder's uh, shortcomings. But in addition, Julian Love, always happy to hear your thoughts on him and the contract extension he's about to get, which is definitely a good sign for the Giants as well. But everybody, make sure to like and subscribe below. Appreciate all the love. Enjoy your Friday. Um, drop those comments as always. I'm going to catch you guys on the next Fireside Giants episode.